Hello, uh, I'm here to talk about my new gem, Put. Now, Put helps you sort objects in memory using Ruby, and it does so following a particular pattern that you may or may not be familiar with uh, using enumerable.sortby and returning an array. So because that pattern isn't super well known, I figured it would make sense to first show an example in pure Ruby and then show off why the put gem can help make your code a little bit cleaner, a little bit safer, uh, and definitely more expressive uh, in terms of what you're intending when you're sorting by multiple criteria. Now, uh, for want of an example, I was thinking about how a lot of folks are having to return to the office soon. Uh, not a testable because we're remote first, but I'm kind of ginning up some empathy to imagine that I would not be looking forward to returning to uh, break rooms and the particular smells that happen uh, when people microwave fish. Uh, so, you know, as a programmer, I'm like a lot of programmers, whenever I've got a social problem and I, I should have a hard conversation with somebody, I'd much rather try to solve that with software and technology. Uh, and, you know, so instead of actually asking someone not to microwave their fish, maybe I'd write a program that would build a duty roster for everyone taking turns cleaning the break room. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to implement break room sort today. Uh, and what it is, is going to prioritize all of the employees in terms of when they should be uh, next responsible for cleaning up the break room. First of all, you know, we're going to sort all the current employees to the top uh, and then anyone with, um, you know, mobility impairments or an accommodation last. Uh, uh, next, anyone who's, you know, cleaned the break room least recently, it should be their turn next uh, or if they've never cleaned it. Uh, Whoever is microwave fish most recently should be the tiebreaker after that uh, because they're, you know, the problem. Uh, and next, uh, if, if that's still a tie, if, if all those conditions are met, then uh, we should have the more senior people in the organization be responsible for cleaning, uh, you know, servant leadership and all that. Uh, so CEO cleans before staff. Uh, and then the last tiebreaker is whoever's located closest to the break room using latitude and longitude. Uh, and so that's our, um, you know, exercise today. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're gonna open up VS Code. I've already done uh, some of the work here to just sort of like uh, flesh things out. So we've got users, we've got a break room, uh, we've got a even a stub method for sorts break room by duty roster or sorts break room duty roster, and a sort method. You can see that these default args here are just gonna generate a break room example and user examples. So break room has a name, latitude, longitude, whether it's clean or not. And these are just using the faker gem to make up fake ones. I'll share all this code later. And a user has name, active, the accommodations that they have, last clean break room, last microwave fish, level, lat, long, longitude, and so forth. All right. So um, one way we can do this is, and one of my favorite ways to do it, it's not the fastest way on the planet, but we're already in memory with Ruby, so presumably we couldn't sort this in a database. If you could just do this with an order by, of course, that would be faster. But in this case, you know, we've got some custom uh, criteria that we want to search. Maybe we don't have a whole lot of employees. So it's safe to just pull all the users in and sort in memory with Ruby. And so we're going to do that using enumerable.sortby. Sort by and user. Uh, so, so we take all the users, we get a user, and then we can sort by any one condition. So we could just say, you know, user dot active. Um, and now that would be true and false. So we run this um, like file here, which is going to call um, call sorts break room uh, duty roster, and it it calls the sort and then it just grabs the first ten items. However, it didn't do that because it tried to compare true and false. Um, so those are not comparable. That means that like. A lot of the work here is gonna gonna be taking non-comparable things like two Boolean values and making them comparable like numbers. So if they're active, then we'll say zero, and if they're not active, we'll say one, so that the the active stuff is lower value and goes above, uh, goes first before stuff with a higher value of one. So that means the active stuff will be sorted at the top, and we should be able to see okay, cool active stuff. Now, one of the cool facts of how sorting works in Ruby is that arrays are sorted one element at a time. So that means that uh, you know we can actually have multiple conditions. We could say, first, show me all the active users on top. And then um, we were talking about mobility accommodations. We could say, um, you know, user dot um, accommodations. I'm not good at spelling this, and I wish autocomplete saved me. Uh, include uh, mobility. Same same uh, sort of trick here. We have to use a ternary to convert this into something that's comparable. We're going to do the opposite because we want this to be descending. So if you have such an accommodation, uh, we're going to say one. Uh, and uh, if not, then we're going to say zero. So so that means that the 
uh, folks with a mobility impairment would not be asked to go and clean the break room. Uh, and, and folks that do, they'd, uh, you know, uh, 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 do not, they, they, they'd sort top. So it's basically just like fling all this stuff to the top and all these people to the bottom uh, of this list as, as the first couple criteria while we get to our other sorting criteria. All right. So we could run that here and we should be able to scan the list and not see any um, mobility accommodations. They might have like, you know, another, another one there. At any given time, we can kind of just look at like which tiebreaker are we looking at by commenting out the ones above us. And yeah, it looks good. We're not sorting the opposite way. All right. The next case that we have now, this is time based, is when did they um, clean the break room? Last cleaned break room at. It's hard to type and talk at the same time. Um, here we can just sort by the date, right? Except we can't do that. Uh, because we have some nil cases. And again, nil is not comparable with much of anything by default. And so comparison of array with array failed. Um, this is all sort by gives you if any, you know, there's a thousand arrays of arrays in here. If any single one of them fail, all you get is this argument error. It doesn't tell you anything. So when you get into the put gem, um, there's a there's a put dot description or put or put dot debug, sorry. Uh, method and you can pass it this array of arrays and it'll try to give you some um, sense of where a comparison is breaking down. But failing that, all we got to do is we got to know nils are not okay. So we can say, hey, uh, if it's nil, uh, you know, maybe, uh, oh yeah, double. <laughs> Ternaries are so tricky when you have a predicate method. Uh, we could say time, parse, um, give it a long, long ago value like 1999. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we will give you the um, user last cleaned break room at value. So that should give us probably a bunch of people with nil cleaned break room ats. Yeah. At the very top of the nil ones, there's only a couple. Uh, and then, oh yeah, there's like seven or eight. Then, yeah, these ones are not very recent. They're 2021. I think we're only generating dates out a year in arrears. Um, so that's cool. And then the next date uh, was user last um, microwaved fish at. Now we can't just do this because if it was a, um, just the date, it would be ascending. Uh, and so if it's ascending, it's going to actually be the most recent uh, 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 fish microwavings would go to the bottom of the list. Um, additionally, we're going to have some nils in there because some people will have never microwaved fish. And so here we could say, all right, um, first of all, if it's nil, so would we put a time in the future? No, we, we wouldn't do that because like we want to get to something that's like going to ascend in the right order. And one way to do that would be to like think of the duration, like how long has it been since they last microwave fish? So we could do that by, um, you know, uh, just as, uh, to, to illustrate time dot now minus when you did this. Now that would be a duration. If I run this though, I'm still gonna have nil. So it's gonna be, I can't convert that. So I, you know, instead of a ternary, another thing I might do is like a, a short circuit um, or statement. I could just say um, time dot now. Uh, of course, if, it's, if I say zero, that'll make it very, very low, which will sort it higher. Oh goodness. If I say zero, that'll make it high. Yes. So that's, that's what I want, I wanna say. <laughs> so we'll, to, to, to isolate to just this condition, we can comment out this stuff and then take a look. So we're gonna run again. Oh, uh, array with array failed again. Oh no, what I do? Um, what did I do? Time. Oh, um, uh, we're gonna just parse a very old date again, 1900-0101. Somebody's probably screaming at their screen. All right. Last clean breaker, last microwave. So, 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 so good. No nils, just very recent microwave uh, incidents. Uh, so that's one way we could do that one. All right. So comment, uncomment these ones. All right. Next up, we have these levels. And if you looked at how this is generated, you'd see uh, randomly, you know, your staff, manager, director, VP, C-suite. These are these are uh, symbols, and they're not going to naturally be sortable. Uh, so we can do that ourselves. We could, do, you know, make a hash of, of numeric values, or we could uh, do like a case statement. So user dot level, you know, win, um, you know, staff then one win, 
uh, manager, then two, win director, then three, win VP, then four, and finally when you're in the C-suite, you're the highest ranking, so you're then five, and then end, of course. Okay, so if I run this, it won't work because I forgot a comma. Ca comma. Okay, try that again. All right, so that did a thing, but the let's check that the sort actually worked first by isolating to just that case. And no, it didn't. It's showing staff on top, and that's because one comes before five. So a trick that we can do is we can say negative one times, and then the negative five will come up first. And cool, these are all now in the C-suite. So that, that, that condition worked. The final condition we had was about distance. Uh, uh, so I already wrote a little plain old Ruby object called gets distance using the geokit uh, um, uh, gem. So gets distance.new.get user.lat user.long. Um, and then the break room has a latitude and a longitude as well. And that'll give me a value. I'm going to, again, just focus on isolating one thing at a time. If I ran this, it'll blow up because uh, additionally, some users may not have a location there. So if there's any nils, we're going to get a nil and then nils aren't comparable. And you're now very familiar and expert at this sort by pattern. All right. So we're going to just do a quick uh, a break over and say, Minimally distant uh, is what so date uh, ascending. So we want a very high number to to push you to the bottom of the list, and a high number would be like float infinity. There we go. Cool. And so if we look at these Latin longs, you can see that they're kind of close together. I don't know where the break room is, but one presumes it's near that. All right. So those are all our conditions. Let's uncomment them all and run it. Again, we don't have any tests. And all this data constantly keeps changing, but it seems pretty right. Okay, so yeah, people who've never cleaned before but are active, they, those are going to float to the top. All right, so let's start talking about the put gem. Uh, so first, we're going to, uh, let's see, take a look at our uh, readme. So it's testable slash put, gem install put, you put, ge put, put in your gem file. Uh, it's a three character name, so I got excited, but like the API is pretty straightforward. You have like put first, put last, put ascending, but it's not like a top level API. It's meant to pair with sort by, and that's why I think an example is going to be the best way to show everyone. All right, so let's add put to our gem file, put, and then we're going to um, bundle, bundle up. Great. Uh, require put. Cool. Now let's just do one thing at a time. So first of all, we know that active users we want to put at the front or the top or first. Uh, so we're going to say put first if user.active. That's all we're going to say. Remove that. Now, because that's an, uh, an inline if statement, we need to wrap it in parentheses so the parser knows what to do with us. We run that. Good. Everyone's active. So that one's right. Uh, now we actually want to put last if you have a mobility accommodation. So we're going to say put last if uh, user.accommodations. Mobility, okay. And we can see real quick. Didn't see any mobility. So that's sorted in the right order, I think. Next up, uh, the break room thing. Now, what's nice about put is it's nil safe by default. So we don't have to worry about all these nil cases. We can actually just say put ascending user dot last uh, cleaned break room at and that would be all we need to do, except for the fact that if you've never cleaned the break room before, we actually want you, it'll be nil, and we want you to be at the top of the list. By default, nils will go to the bottom of the list because usually they just don't matter, but this is the opposite case. So we can say nils first true with this optional keyword argument. All right, so let's whack that, take a look, see if this seems to work. Yeah, so you can see these um, relatively distant cleanings followed by nil. So. So all but seven people had cleaned at some point, and then it's back to like 2021 September. Okay, this next case here, we'd broken down and kind of computed a duration to get it into a descending order, but we don't have to do that because put actually will um, have a descending method, and what it does is it's the same as ascending, except it'll just like negatify the the result of the comparison operator of like you know a to b, and so it'll just know that 
if it's given a time, uh, that the, the newest time should go on top. So we can say last microwaved uh, fish at, uh, and here we want the nils to go on the bottom because people who've never microwaved fish shouldn't be more responsible uh, for, for cleaning the break room. And so we can just say put descending uh, last microwaved fish and that should work. And we're gonna check it by just commenting everything out that we got so far. Run that and you can see we've got some very recent fish microwaving incidents in just a few days ago in uh, September of 2022. All right. Now we got this case case statement of um, ranks or levels inside the organization uh, numerified and then multiplied by negative one. So here uh, we want to have um, you go descending by rank. So put descending and then we can actually have the same case statement. We just get rid of um, that negative one. Now it's a little bit weird looking at a case statement like this. It probably makes sense to extract it or, 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 or add a method to user, but I think that's fine for now. And we can just, again, can't hurt to double check, run this and see, yeah, level C, C suite. All right, okay. Commenting out this one so we can take a look at the distance. This should be really easy. We just get rid of the nil check because it handles nils for us. All right. So that's an example of like, you know, maybe you could have done almost all of this in a database order by statement, but then this last one would have been difficult with translating, uh, you know, uh, levels to numbers. And then this last one might've been very, very difficult unless you have like a post GIS or something uh, in, your, in your database to compare the distance between two points. Um, and so we had to do this in Ruby, for example, just to get this distance comparison. And here we are, you can see it still seems to work. All right. So uncommenting this and just sort of taking it all in and hiding our terminal, you can sort of see like it's way clearer. It's still not beautiful code, but if you've seen sort by done before, you can kind of see, okay, so top, top of the list, if they're active last, if they've got a mobility impairment, uh, ascending order for who's um, most uh, who's cleaned the break room least recently, and if they've never go the to the top, and so on and so forth. And so that's roughly how um, how you might use put to sort a, a, a list of stuff based on complex or or, or numerous uh, criteria. And so yeah, that's uh, it's a fun little gem. That's all it does. It just makes sort by uh, uh, blocks like this a little bit clearer. Uh, but I hope that you'll think of it next time that you got to sort stuff in Ruby uh, and and you got a lot of conditions and you you don't want to create a whole bunch reams and reams of objects uh, to do a lot of complex logic. Sort by can do the heavy lifting for you. Uh, so I hope you find this useful. And if you have any comments, feedback, or or, or questions, feel free to tweet at me, email me, or leave a comment.